Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 37 of the year 2021, transferring two ambassadors, extraordinary and uh, plenipotentiary, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs under the Edict. The head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to China, Dr. Anwar Yusuf Abdullah Al Abdullah, and the head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission to France, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Ghaffar, were transferred to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 38 of the year 2000. 2021, appointing a director at the Ministry of Interior as follows. Article 1, Major Fahad bin Abdelaziz al bin Ali is appointed director at the Ministry of Interior. Article 2, the Minister of Interior shall place the director mentioned in Article 1 of this decision in one of the vacant departments of the Ministry of Interior according to the duties, responsibilities and necessary requirements and considering his qualifications and experience. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Imam bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued a circular regarding the Arafah and Eid Al Adha holidays. According to the circular, the kingdom's ministries and public institutions will be closed on the day of Arafah and during Eid Al Adha, corresponding to the 19th till the 22nd of July, respectively. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting. The cabinet began by extending Eid Al Adha wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister before recognizing the pivotal role journalism plays in society and congratulated the recipients of the Prime Minister Journalism Award. The cabinet then reviewed Bahrain's vaccination progress, including the vaccination of Bahrainis residing abroad, as well as reviewing the progress of the committee's assessment of 111 legislative pieces seven of which were amended in accordance with His Royal Highness's directives to the committee to ensure legislation supports development. The following memorandums were approved. First, a memorandum by the Government Executive Committee concerning the formulation of legislation that strengthens the rule of law, safeguarding rights and supports development. 
A memorandum by the Government Executive Committee concerning the National Labour Market Plan 2021-2023 to promote private sector engagement through labour market regulations. An MOU by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the Framework for Academic Cooperation between the University of Bahrain and the King S.E. Jong Institute in Korea regarding Korean language programs for students. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance concerning initiatives that promote the aviation sector as a driver for economic growth. A joint memorandum between the Minister of Finance and National Economy and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism concerning the decision of the GCC Standing Committee for Combating Harmful Practices in International Trade to impose anti-dumping fees on a number of GCC imports. A memorandum by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism concerning technical cooperation programs between the Ministry and the Saudi Standards Meteorology and Quality Organization to ensure trade products meet custom requirements. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs concerning the government's response to a regulatory proposal presented by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following topic. The Ministerial Committee for Economic and Financial Affairs and Physical Balances Memorandum on its work during the first half of 2021, including initiatives undertaken to optimize public spending in support of economic growth. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fozi Azenel, praised the Royal Directives for developing legislations and laws in line with the requirements of sustainable development achieving its goals for the benefit of the country and its citizens. She expressed her appreciation for the efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in implementing the Royal Directive and forming a follow-up committee which began studying 111 legislative instruments and resulted in the amendment of seven legis legislations for the development of a number of sectors to enhance the maintenance of rights and the rule of law and keep pace with development requirements as well as update and develop a number of procedures. Zainal affirmed that developing legislation to keep pace with development is a parliamentary priority in implementation of the royal directives and to enhance joint and effective cooperation with the government. The Shura Council Chairman Adia Saleh affirmed that developing national legislation to meet the requirements of development and the, is the goal of the Council and works to achieve in accordance with the vision of His Majesty the King in a way that strengthens the state of institutions and law and advances the economic and services sector. He highlighted the continuation of the existing cooperation with the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to advance national legislation and support policies, programs and development plans for the benefit of the country and citizens. He also noted the steps taken by the Cabinet during its weekly meeting regarding the necessary constitutional and legal procedures regarding the first batch of legislative amendments, which reflects the continuous support of the legislative authority and its role in updating legislation and laws in line with the development and progress witnessed by the Kingdom in various sectors. An agreement was signed between Primary Health Care and the use of an Aisha al Mu'ayya charity for the expansion of Bilad al-Qadim Health Center. In the presence of the Minister of Health, Faiq al-Salih, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid al mana the CEO of Primary Health Care Centers, Dr. Jadir al-Sayyid Jawad, presented Representatives Ahmed al-Saloum and Hala al Mu'ayyad. The Minister of Health expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to the use of an Aisha al Mu'ayya charity for the noble donation, stressing that this support comes in light of the company's social responsibility and in the context of its keenness to support various institutions that provide health and treatment services to patients. Minister Asalah added that the donation will support the health sector in providing the best health services to citizens and residents in Bahrain and will contribute to further development of the health sector. The minister stated that contributions to charity projects is an essential element of the principle of community, partnership and solidarity in the kingdom and these donations are among charity projects that serve the community with all its segments support social and national events and activities and contribute effectively to development. 
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,088,415 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,023,415 had taken the second, and 89,250 had taken the booster shot. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And to speak more about the importance of adhering to precautionary measures, we are joined on the phone by the head of NCD Group in Public Health and Public Health Consultant at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Amira Ali al -Nuh. Hello, Dr. Amira. Welcome to the news. Hi, good evening. With the decrease of cases and the improvement in the health situation, what's your advice to citizens and residents to further contribute to enhancing it? Um, um of course, uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity, and I just want to emphasize the importance of uh, sticking and adhering to all layers of uh, prevention uh, and public health measures, um, including completing doses of vaccinations uh, and boosters, uh, as well as adhering to um, preventative measures, including uh, social distancing, avoiding um, gathering as much as they can, um, wearing face masks properly and at all times when in, around people as well as hand washing and the, all the preventative measures that we keep emphasizing uh, they also need to um, control their chronic conditions and um, improve their immunity through proper sleep um, exercise eating healthy um, because we continue to um, advise for all the public health measures right right that's great. Thank you so much for giving us that advice. That was the head of the NCD group in public health and public health consultant at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Amira Ali al Nuh. Thank you for joining us. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,115 with 144 recoveries, 112 registered new cases and one death. 47 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 57 are contacts of active cases and 8 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.